Be sure and tell them Lord Mars sent ya. <laughs> In the 90s, we were just teeny tights. We went to movies and our bikes. We wanted to be DJs, but we were just teeny gals. So we went off to college and we remained. Hey guys, welcome to the Large Marge Sinus Podcast, your favorite podcast where two sweetie sisters talk about movies that shape their childhood. I'm Sweetie with an I-E. And I'm Sweetie with a Y. Today is my pick, guys. Yeah. Um, really excited about this. Why? Well, you know, there's some movies where you feel like that you, you know, I would say we have pretty good memories, right? Yes. It's a huge part of why yep. we do this podcast, mm-hmm. right? Great. Excellent we've, memory. We have great memories. And, you know, people always listen to us and they're like, wow, I can't remember, guys, you remember like all this stuff from your child and all that stuff. And part of it is because we have each other, I think, to like help us out with the memories. But I also think in general, we have very good memories, right? Uh, but sometimes, you know, you remember a movie or you loved a movie and you're like, was I the only one who saw that movie? And like, you're like, I don't know. I just like love when we decide to do a movie and then all of a sudden, like, all these people come out of the woodwork and they're like, oh my God, I love that movie too. And that's like one of my favorite things about doing this podcast is that like, you know, a lot of you who listen to this podcast, we do, you know, we grew up around the same time, right? Let's say like early 80s to even late 80s maybe. Mm -hmm. And we all were watching the same movies like all the time. Why is that? I know. Well, because that was the only thing to do. I mean, we all had the same TV stations. We all grew up with Disney, yada, yada, yada. So anyway, so I put this movie on, I think, um, one of the like summer preview, like we're going to do this movie, blah, blah, blah. And fucking girls came running, been like, man, my favorite movie. Oh, my God. I love this movie. Not favorite, but like I love this movie. And we just got such good feedback on it Mm -hmm. that I was like, we need to do it ASAP. Oh, my God. What? movie is that it is wild Wild hearts can't be broken wild hearts can't be broken really feel like they miss wild uh, hearts can't but your retinas (laughs) can't it's my new song (laughs) i feel like they missed a good opportunity to have a really good theme song for this movie yeah that was it i just sang it no no that was probably that that would be the best choice from the actual movie like i guess you know in the early 90s they weren't doing a thing where they'd have like Pink, do your theme song, you know? So they really, like, missed the boat on that because this would have been perfect. Well, like, a league of their own, Madonna. Like, I feel like, I'm sure it was of, maybe they just thought, you know, I don't know, period piece. Like, like, it wasn't The them. subject matter was, like, too serious slash not. Like, yeah, I don't know. The, the phrase period piece and not, like, laugh. <laughs> uh, thinking it's about menstrual yes. cycles. <laughs> Never Good use one. that term again. Good um, one. What am I supposed to say? Uh, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Um, Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken, guys, from 1991. Disney original movie. Whoa. So I was under the impression that this was like a TV movie, but it turns out it did come out in the theaters. Huh. So it was just like done by Disney. But I think I saw it during the w- magical, wonderful world of Disney. You know, they used to mm-hmm. air those movies on, at like 8 o'clock on Sundays, I feel like it was. Mr. Boogity, remember we did Mr. Boogity, and that was one of those. A lot of those, right? So I feel like that's where I I saw this like many times, and um, really stuck with me. Hmm. Here's why. Okay. Okay, girl. You know, and this is what's any movie is about, like Spitfire Girl being like, I'm gonna do it no matter what. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I really connected with. Sure. Are you the same? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Almost all cases, I would say. Right. And. Yeah, and I think especially for you, I don't know if you had caught the history bug at this point, but something tells me that that's another thing that appealed to you about this movie. Did I like the 1930s and all that jazz as much now as I did? Uh, I don't think so, but you know what I did like? The hats. And we'll go into it later. Woo! Great. The hat game is strong in this film. Mm -hmm. No, but I remember just... um, just really being connected to this film because the protagonist, Sonora Carver is Webster 
Oh shit. Who's Carver? Oh, Nay Webster. Oh, Webster. Yeah. Oh, gosh, she You're saying she gets married. Yeah. Okay. Sonora Webster uh, is a really good character. And like her whole journey is really great through all this. Um, and, and it's really captivating to me. I think on the other end of that, if you were a horse girl, <laughs> you were very into this movie. And here's the thing, everybody. What's a horse girl? Okay, everyone grew up with horses, <laughs> right? So like there well, was a I feel small like two section. Kinds of, I feel like there's two kinds of horse girls. Okay. Girls whose faces look like horses. No, that's not what I'm talking about. See, Hillary Swank for no, for more information. <laughs> she is beautiful. Or, yeah, but she has a horse face. Or B, girls who liked horses. Okay, I'm talking about girls who like okay. horses. Okay, so there's a small percentage of girls who are obsessed with horses i don't know what makes you obsessed with horses is it like in your genes yeah, is it like your mom okay most of the horse girls that i know like their families were very into horses right it wasn't just like came out of nowhere kind of thing hmm. so i grew up with this girl Catherine heard total <laughs> horse girl but she had horses and like her grandmother had horses and her mom rode horses so that makes sense right but you know what i mean like who was yeah. a horse girl yeah. in your grade uh danielle see yeah who had like who had ponies who was obsessed not okay everyone's obsessed with my little pony right that's a given yeah but then that went beyond yeah. that and like, they like collected horses. like thoroughbred like, yeah. models mm, of horses yeah you know? liked black beauty like it, yeah. you know et cetera, et cetera. right sure and, sure, and sure so that was right exactly and and horse stories are very are woven like somewhat mm. into mm -hmm. culture you just said black beauty national velvet great movie with elizabeth taylor old um <laughs> sea biscuit mm. uh you know there's horse shit right there's horse shit um so you're either like love that or not and i i have no interest in horses like whatsoever i did horseback riding i went horseback riding literally once in my life me and too. i kicked the horse and it almost ran away <laughs> so that was it for me your uh, fantasy situation of wild hearts can't be broken was broken. Yeah, exactly what Snorri said. Don't use your heels. <laughs> I used my heels and that horse went flying. Uh, but yeah, so I, I wasn't a horse girl, but I was very like entranced with this movie. So I think most girls were. And that was the feedback that I got from telling people that we were going to do this film. I think it's also one of those movies that's just so bizarre that you're like, did I imagine that movie? Wait. And then someday you're just like sitting at the table and you're like, wait, is there a movie about a girl who dives off a thing with a horse and the horse goes in the pool? What? And what's even more bizarre is that it's true. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not this actual person. Yes. Oh, it is? Okay. The I whole couldn't tell. story is true. Oh. Oh, my God. I know crazy well i can't wait to hear about your history lesson okay because i i got um lot. here so my I did memory, some additional research not my, just the the uh imdb page uh -huh, uh -huh. my memory of this is mostly just an inkling of like a scene it's it's honestly the only thing i remember from it which leads me to believe that either i did not actually see this whole movie and then i probably you were watching it on the television set and i probably like came in i was like what are you watching but i was too like young for it or something i was kind of half paying attention it's a little too farty old fashioned for little old andre let's just say that but right, that's also i probably why... came in at the at this exact moment that this like traumatic scene happens and for the rest of my life i associated this movie with that like i thought the movie like opened with that and yeah. that the whole movie was her journey of accepting this like blindness and how she conquers it and thing. but that's not the case yeah let's go back to that farty old-fashioned because um i find that interesting because you're right like it is farty old-fashioned yeah, and is it's like, like why of farty why would we be so interested in that as like so this came out in 1991 so i would have been eight um like how would i have been interested in that and like why would i have gravitated towards that but then you remember like anna green gables and like avonlea and those mm. were pretty like farty stuff too and boring and i don't know if that was just like what we like were used to were like these old stories that kind of got brought back and we were used to them so we were still interested in them i can't imagine like this coming out now and girls being like ah oh, well there's gabby brogan like love this <laughs> well, movie i mean i think if there was a cute popular boy starring in it sure, sure they would was. see anything but like i don't know i'm sure there's a lot of factors the horses the the love story just the like fact that this is a, a time where you didn't have as many channels you I mean, you had a TV guide, maybe, to find out what else was playing, but, like, whatever yeah. you put on, like, you pretty much had to watch. Yeah. Kids um, are spoiled now. So we just watched it. We didn't have a choice. It wasn't like, let's watch this or Power Rangers. Yeah. Like, this was on at the time, so we watched it. Yeah. And I mean, I've always loved that dated shit. That's, like, been, like, my entire life. So not surprised. I loved it. 
But, um, okay, so Wild Hearts Can't Be Rogan, as I said, 1991 Disney movie. Um, you know, not a lot of people you know in this film. Nope. Here's who's in it. An actress named Gabrielle Anwar. Here's what she's been in thus. She was only 21 when she made this. Huh. Though I think her character is supposed to be like 15. What? Yeah. So, Lovely. yeah, real young. Uh, but she looks young. She's a young mm-hmm. face. So you might know her if you've ever seen The Tudors, the show on Showtime about Henry VIII. She was Princess Margaret Henry VIII's uh, sister who like marries that like old busted like French king who like dies in his sleep or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyway, good role for her. And then she was in, what did I say, Burn Notice, which was that show on um, uh huh. TBS or something, TNT, uh, that you don't yeah. see like um, like commercials for or whatever. Anyway, so I don't know what she's done but um, since then, but probably like whatever. And then even more famous in this is the actor Michael Schofield, which is mm-hmm. now, this is our third movie covering him. Coincidentally, this was his last movie he ever did. He said, fuck you to acting. Here's why. He sucks. I mean, yeah, I don't know if he had a choice. I think they were whoa. like, you suck, and then didn't give him any other parts. Yeah. They were like, we've been casting this entire time because you're really good looking, and here's the deal. You can't act. And I feel bad for the guy. I honestly do. I mean, he's a looker, but he's he's yeah. really a horrible actor. Yeah. Um. So, weird thing. I just Googled Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken. You know what came up? Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken by Pink. Mm. That's so weird because at the beginning you were like, I don't think this is, you know, Did they you do a remake Pink of this do movie? The theme song. I don't think so. She just has a song called Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken. Well, the reason I picked Pink was because <laughs> she's done a lot of songs. Maybe I'm thinking of like Greatest How Showman. How did you know? She just seems like that person who would like sing the, the theme song, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Uh, anyone else in this of note? No, really? Uh, maybe, but we don't know. Yeah, we, we weren't really probably familiar not. with the cast. Right. Um, that's that's really all. I think we can start talking about the yeah, movie we can now or the like synopsis. talk I about mean, people we don't know. I'll give the history lesson post synopsis because I did learn Good. a lot about the Good. real Sonora uh, Webster, Carver Knee Webster. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so I'll be sharing that later in the program. Hmm. But I guess it's time for the sweetie synopsis. Yeah. Sweeties. You going to cry? Nope. You gonna cry? Yeah. I never cry. <laughs> Good one. Sonora Webster is a young girl of, I guess, 15. We're not really sure. I don't think they explicitly state it. Here's what I do know she lives in Georgia with her sister who looks ill because <laughs> <laughs> she has like super white hair and pale skin. No offense if that's your look, also, but she looks a little ill. Um, also, her name is Arnett, which would make anybody <laughs> ill. That's a horrible name. I feel very bad for her. But also, guys, actually, we forgot to mention, she, uh, this little girl actress, was the same girl who played Iggy Threadgood in Fred Green Tomatoes. She didn't look so ill there, right? She looks pretty ill. Really? Well, she's like a little it makes pale me ill tell to see little girls with super blonde hair and pale skin. Aww. Just kidding. You're beautiful. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Um, anyways, so uh, Snora has lost her parents. Uh, did the aunt say in a car crash or something? I don't know. You uh, know, you know, you whatever. Know. Like list orphans. Of, list of five hundred things you could die from in the nineteen thirties or whatever. <laughs> there were a lot. Um, you know, you get on a plane, you never know. It was you toss a coin, you might be dead, you might not. Uh, so Snora Webster. Uh, lives in Georgia with her aunt and her little sister. She's a wild child. And by that, I mean she likes horses, uh, takes bets, casual bets. Is like, I bet you can't do this. She's like, oh, yes, I can. Even though she's never tried it before, she'll do it. Sees an ad for Atlantic yeah. City and chops off yeah, her hair. She's like, that's my thing. I'm going to do it. Uh, her aunt can't handle it though. She can't handle she can't handle the pressure of having a teenager. Uh, she apparently didn't sign up for this, although she did. But I mean, you know, blood oath, whatever. La la la. She's like, listen, I know you're my sister's daughter, but uh, I can't handle you, so I'm shipping you off to, uh, to the state. Sorry, bad news. And not her sister. She's keeping Arnett because Arnett's apparently not a rabble rouser. Yeah, she stays like so, Oh well, but uh, yeah, Snore's like, well, fuck this. I'm take my pillowcase, sack and bag, I'm and I'm the getting circus. the fuck out of here. Well, Joining the circus. Yeah, I mean, or as, as any person, the county know. fair. Right, right. Well, she had seen an ad in the paper that said diving girl wanted. 
Um, does she know what's with a horse yet? I'm I not think sure. So. Does she? Because sure. okay. that's I thought that's what I think oh, that's yeah, what like because drove because her to Sonora's it. Sonora's a horse girl, guys. She's like a real horse girl though, because she like really knows horses. Almost as like a horse whisper. Not that horrible, boring movie with Robert Redford, but like actually just good with horses, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, she's like, fuck that, I'm going to the circus. So she like is so confident, which I really is the main thing about her, right? Like the whole story is about her. The bitch does not give up. So she shows up and the diving girl like whole thing is basically like a traveling show by this guy, Dr. Carver. And he's basically like a mm, washed up cowboy. I don't know like what his shit is. Why is he a doctor? I don't know. What is he a doctor of? Yeah. Medicine? I don't know. PhD? PhD? Indian studies? <laughs> um, he's like has this like old busted like fringy coat and this like horrible like mullet. Um uh, the guy's a hot mess. and But he does have this cool show. So Diving Girl, here's the deal. It is a platform 40 to 60 feet huh. up in the air. It's different. So the girl climbs up the platform. She has like a, a stairs that go up to it. And then, then this, lo- this big ramp that the horse runs up. And then right as the horse like is going to run and jump off the platform into this pool that is below... Uh, 11 foot pool that is below the girl jumps on the horse and dives with it right pretty cool pretty dangerous Mm. um you know the horses aren't scared they just do it and you know the girl holds on and everything's okay i don't know seems dangerous i don't know who invented it was it doc carver it why would you do it i have a lot of questions yeah uh, number one, why does a girl have to climb up a ladder when there is a perfectly good yeah, platform she can what? just like run up? I guess it's not as cool looking. Um, B, why does there have to be a girl diving at all? Isn't it just cool enough to see a horse diving off the exactly. thing? Would the horse have dived without somebody jumping onto his back? Well, doesn't that spook him more if somebody just jumps on him at the end? I don't know. Why were we interested in this? Why were we like, must have this content? I don't get it. Yeah. I don't know. But like, you know, the 30s and if you know like anything about like kind of the circus industry at that time, um, P.T. Barnum, right? Like doing all this cool stuff. And it was a big form of entertainment to like go to these, to go to circuses, to go see freak shows, to go see like cool things. So I feel like there's, you know, people were always trying to like outdo each other with these like cool stunts and stuff. And then once you got a really good stunt as this Dr. Carver did, you could travel to different places and, and really make money that way. Right. So, um, so that's, that's the deal. So she shows up and she's like, I want to be your next diving girl. And they're like, hell no. What they like did advertise for it. So I'm confused why he was like, no, she's too young. She right. wasn't, okay. she didn't have boobs. Oh, right. Right. Um, she's, she wasn't like glamour enough. Yeah, like, she's for but, um, you know, she keeps coming back and he kind of like admires her gumption. So he's like, listen, you can like help us with the horses. Cause she was familiar with horses and she grew up with them and whatever. So she kind of ends up being part of this team, which includes Marie, the diving girl, mm-hmm. uh, Dr. Carver, who owns it. And then Dr. Carver's hot son, Al. Too bad his name's Al. That's a really unfortunate name for a cute guy. Uh, it would have been so much cuter if they just called him Albert. I know. I like. I would have liked that. Yeah. How old do you think we do? We think he is twenties, mid twenties, twenties, early twenties. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, so they, uh, you know, she's doing the horse thing. She basically just like shovels manure, and uh, at one time Al brings home a new horse. Um, wins it in a poker game and so wild horse needs to be tamed um, so she you know has this real connection to it uh, names it lightning and kind of talks with Al and decides like okay how can I show my dad like I can be a diving girl maybe if I like train this horse then it'll happen right wait my dad who's dad Dr. Carver oh Al's dad oh oh yeah train her to be a a girl. Yeah. So okay. she starts working with lightning like full time, mm-hmm. uh, kind of on the side. So like Dr. Carver like doesn't know. So um, one day she figures out what she like. Oh, rides out with him. R- rides mm-hmm. out with lightning because lightning's kind of a crazy horse. So they had they did have to like tame him. And then she is able to like get on him and ride him around. So that gives like mm-hmm. Dr. Carver like hope that, you know, she could potentially be a diving girl. But he's like, OK. If you can get on the horse, you know, the big thing about the whole diving trick is that the horse runs up that ramp and then they have to jump on it while it's running. So they call it like a run and catch or something. Mm. I don't know. Some sort of like technique where you grab a horse as it's running by. It has this big saddle with these like big handles on it. So you think it'd be easy to do, but it's really hard. 
It looks a little easy. I, do, I just don't get why that when they practice it, they don't practice it like on a little incline. Because yeah. the way she's practicing is totally different from how it yeah. is like in the actual thing. But yeah. whatever. What do we know? Yeah. So describe what I'm calling Bloody Sunday. Bloody Sunday. Oh, so in your typical sports movie, you have this moment where your main character is trying to like learn how to do something. Uh, oh, I got to learn how to... Uh, figure figure skate like in the yeah. cutting edge right and there's always the like the fall montage mm-hmm. so get up 100 fall 100 times get up 99 or whatever is that the saying let's hope so <laughs> <laughs> um but so she tries over and over again to do this thing and every time she does it she like falls on her face and she gets a bloody nose and then gets you know she keeps doing it so she keeps getting blood on herself or yeah. maybe she's getting more bloody noses she's like i don't know shirt, so yeah like, well, she's unfortunately shirt. wearing a white shirt I mean, so she's covered in blood sweetie here has dubbed it sunday bloody sunday <laughs> Um, is, was it on a Sunday? We don't know. I don't know if that's accurate. Yeah. But, but I will say this is one scene in the movie I remembered. As soon as it mm. started playing in the movie, I was like, this scene. And it's really great because this is when you really start rooting for her to the point, one of those scenes that like, so spoiler, uh, she, I mean, this whole thing's a spoiler. Uh, <laughs> she does it, guys. She grabs a horse and you're all like, it's that moment where you stand up in your seat. You're like, yes. Because you're like with her in the journey, mm-hmm. right? Like you're seeing her fall mm-hmm. again and again and again. And she wants to try it. Keep trying and trying. So she does it. She does it. It's so exciting. And she's happy and everyone's happy. So Doc Carver's like, okay, you can train to be a diving girl. Mm-hmm. So she's pumped. She's yeah. pumped, right? Yeah. So yeah, Marie takes her and is like showing her something one day or whatever. And she's like, no, 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 no. Let me show you. And hops on lightning. And hops on lightning. Or at this point, has Al left? I think he has. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So there's like a big to do. And Al's like, I forget. Wait, what is the fight about? I don't even remember. Uh, I it's just like. Wasn't it when. Oh, he. OK, so when they were doing Bloody Sunday, Bloody <laughs> Sunday, um, you know, Al is very protective. So Al and Sonora are forming this relationship. There was a moment where they went swimming and he kissed her a couple times and she kind of like pushed mm-hmm. him away because I think she's a little nervous her first time and all. She's like, oh, I'm 15. And here. she's, yeah, yeah. This is statch rape. Like, let's get real. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Not just kidding. It's true. <laughs> but yeah. So she knows it's inappropriate, which is good. And also I think she just wants to keep her eye on the prize, which is like being a diving girl. So anyway, so they form this relationship. And then during the Bloody Sunday portion um when she starts getting a bloody nose al's like let's stop like go back and it's doc carver who's like no keep going and kind of pushes her to keep going so he takes over and and kind of like fuels her to keep going and going and i think al gets upset about that and Mm -hmm. he kind of starts comparing it to like oh you're gonna keep doing this like you know pressuring these girls to do this stuff and then he makes a comparison to his mother who maybe was a diving girl and maybe like he pushed her too far maybe she had an accident like we don't know Hmm. so they get in this huge fight and the dad dr carver punches al right Hmm. yep yeah and then he's like that's it i can't take anymore grabs his duffel bag he's fucking out of there he's out yep and he's and it's a duffel bag or is it another pillowcase bag might be a pillowcase i think it's a pillowcase Yeah. yeah so sonora's like write to me and then he's gone he's gone yep so um Yes, so as you said, Marie falls off lightning. Well, I didn't say that yet, <gasps> but yeah. So she's showing her on lightning. Lightning is is um, Sonora's horse, so she's like, no, he doesn't he doesn't trust you. No, I'll do it, blah, blah, blah. Don't, okay, don't dig your heels in, which is like the number one thing lightning hates. Marie does that immediately and gets thrown off the back of the horse, uh, dislocates her arm or something, can't do, can't do the diving show. For six weeks. So, Dr. Cropper needs a replacement. His only option is to put Sonora on that damn horse. So, keep in mind, Sonora's never done the actual trick before. She's just done the, like, thing where you pretend to, like, where where you do jump on the horse to, like, hold on to the harness. She's like, yeah, I'll do it. Okay, great. So, she fucking does it. And it works out. Yep. It, it all goes fine. She's real good Everyone's at Everyone's excited. Everyone's like, yay, you're great. We love you. And from there, she kind of turns into this overnight success. Marie's pissed. She's like, yep. fuck no. I want to be an actress. I can't have this little bitch taking over my job. I'm out of here too. Yeah. So, so now, I'm not, yeah. I'm not sharing this role with yeah. anybody. Because it really was her show. And that does suck. Like, I feel bad. But that lady was not nice and didn't deserve it. So it's fine. Meanwhile, Al is like all over... You know, he's in like North Carolina and Virginia or like whatever, writing Sonora letters like, I don't know, once a week. And fucking dad, uh, Dr. Carver, 
like intercepts all the mail and is either throwing them out or like putting them in his coat pocket or burning them. It's sabotaging. Yeah. Sucks. So he's trying to keep those guys apart. Um, clearly for his own interests, wanting Sonora probably to stay focused on like her job as being this diving girl, but also like doesn't want his son to find love. Like what? Yeah. What's wrong with you? An asshole. Yeah, he sucks. So um, one point, I forgot what, where Dr. Carver goes, but he like leaves. And Sonora has to take care of the horses by herself. So all of a sudden, uh, Lightning, her horse gets really sick. He can't get up so sad she doesn't know what to do i mean she loves horses and knows a lot about them but doesn't really know when mm. one gets sick she covers him with a blanket it's the best she could do yeah so as luck would have it it's also raining huh and as luck would have it who comes out of the rain uh, oh floppy brimmed hat <laughs> Al. Big eyebrows. Al. Al. Al knows what to do Al figures out the wheat is moldy oh sorry the hay is moldy <laughs> Nothing worse than moldy hay. Apparently horses can't eat moldy hay. Yeah. They go a little cray cray. Yeah, gives them um, I'm still unsure like how they fixed him, but they got him to stand up and then they're like, he'll be fine. So I don't know if he just like couldn't be idle or like, I don't well, know. Well, his solution was he needs water and oil. I don't know what that did, hmm. but drive out you the, know the hydration will, will cure yeah, anybody that's know. what i always say. But Drink the important part is that Al is back, lightning is going to be okay, but he's still ill. So uh well okay so they get an opportunity so, to go to atlantic city yeah they get an opportunity to go to atlantic city they're all excited al's back everyone seems to be like friendly or whatever uh they're driving in their little like parade of vans and dr carb was like oh let's pull over i gotta take a rest aka i think i'm having a heart attack gonna I go die under this tree well yeah so everyone's having a nice picnic and then dr carver's over there having a moment dying under a tree um, very sad. Al's very sad with it. You know, can't handle his grief, blah, blah, blah. So now he's basically taking over the show. They continue on to Atlantic City. Lightning is still reeling from his disease with the moldy hay. So Sonora has to tri- uh, drive. I almost said drive. Has to ride this other horse, who she doesn't know as well, which is always a gamble. You shouldn't do it. You know what else you shouldn't do? What did Dr. Carver tell her at the very beginning when she was like, don't the horses get scared? And he was like, no, the horses never get scared. If a horse ever shows a sign of being scared, I don't let them. I don't let them go up there. Uh, They don't listen to that because this horse, he's a little spooked because Atlantic City has a band, has all these people. It's so noisy. They didn't account for that, I guess, or whatever. Um, But she attempts to do her trick anyways. Unfortunately, sweetie, what happens? So, um... Yes, as Sweetie said, so the platform deal is basically the same thing. You know, that large platform, blah, 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 the pool, whatever. Addition to this is that they have a brass band performing yeah. alongside of just that. Yeah. Sorry. And this is new for the horse, new for everybody. <laughs> so as the horse is riding, some jerk with a cymbal <laughs> crashes at this opportune moment spooks the horse and he sort of like trips off of the platform which kind of like freaks sonora out enough that she loses her position her normal position on the horse so she kind of like hits the water in a weird way also sadly with her eyes open i don't really know how that's possible Hmm. if you're hitting water i just feel like naturally like Hmm. you would close your eyes and just be like but she doesn't so she opens her eyes and just hits water uh, Doc had said, like in the beginning, when she, before she even went to do her first one, always make sure your head is to the side, so you never want to go like full force into the water, in at that speed on the horse and that force with your eyes like straight to the water, right? But she does, unfortunately, because of this, you know, the horse tripping. So she comes out and is like a little bit freaked out. She's like, my eyes sting, but like you know. And then there's a a moment where that her eyes kind of go in and out of focus, but uh, she's fine in general. Gets off, everyone's a little spooked, but goes off well. And then gradually as the days progress, uh, she begins to lose her vision. To the point she's brushing her hair, and all of a sudden she can't see at all. It's gone. Scary, Dun- guys. Dunzo. Goes to the doctor, and apparently hitting the water at that force caused like a hemorrhage in her her eyes to the point where her retinas, de- both of them, detach. So she's, if she had gotten, went to the doctor immediately after this had happened, they maybe could have fixed it, controlled the hemorrhaging, like whatever. Uh, too late. She ignored it. And now she's fucking blind forever. Awful. Oh, Awful. and BTW, that right before she did this, you know, final uh, mm. ominous dive, Al proposes to her. It's embarrassing as hell. And no to public proposals, people. But like 
what? So it's supposed to be like the happiest day of her life and she goes blind. Yep. Goes blind. So Awful. now she's got to deal with this blindness, has to learn how to like count shit. Terrible thing. You know, it's one thing to um, basically grow up being blind and in your senses adapt to it and you become, you know, quote unquote good at being blind but <laughs> to just be thrown into it i feel like would, is awful and she like she has a hard time with it most of She's all because denial. she can't dive anymore but they need a replacement because they have to do this atlantic city contractor they have to pay this this like mob boss tons of money um so um al calls in marie old marie good old marie um, who's like so thrilled she can have her place back i guess she didn't make much headway trying to be an actress and being discovered and famous um, so she's more than happy to take this role up again. However, Snore's like, let me do it. I can do it. And we're like, girl, you're still getting used to being blind. Like, I don't think it's a good idea. But she you knows she's tenacious. She needs to do it. She wants to do it. So her little buddy, uh, what is that guy's name? The little uh, hot dog guy with the red hair? Conrad? I don't know. No. Conrad. Connie? <laughs> <laughs> we'll call him Connie. No. Uh, yeah, hot dog guy is like, oh, let's do this plan. So they lock Marie in her trailer, which is basically a tin can. I don't know why she couldn't get out of that, but apparently she couldn't. So she's stuck in there, and then um, Sonora like takes off her dress, or whatever, and like stands out of the crowd Wait, and, and goes up been, the, the ladder. She like, had done some trials of trying to get on the horse blind and didn't go. Oh well. no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's cl- obviously it didn't go well, but she decides to do it anyways. And Al doesn't know about it; he's freaking out. And they train the horse. This is where it gets a little weird. This they like train the horse to like run up there by itself, based on the fact that Sonora like puts her hand down to show the horse she's ready or whatever and then it's super slow motion it takes like 30 seconds um maybe a minute to get this horse up this fucking thing because we're going slow and she's breathing you can hear breathing and the horse is like clip clip clop clip clop clip clop and then she grabs on and they go over they miss the pool she dies (laughs) just kidding I was gonna say she no longer cares of putting her head to the side because she's like I'm fucking That's blind what I anyway. Was gonna say I'm pretty sure she put her head down, but they fall in the pool, they land, everyone goes wild. It's great. Uh, so she continues doing this in the voiceover for 11 years, but they don't tell anybody she's blind, which I feel like is a missed out opportunity. I feel like they could have gotten way more many people to come to these shows, but whatever. That's the end. The end. Happily ever after. Yay. Um. Whew. Pretty quick, pretty, you know, and as Disney original movies usually are, it's a quickie. I didn't look up the exact time, but. Yeah. Um, it went pretty fast, which I felt good about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm still pretty entranced by this movie. Mm. I think a real, real feel good flick for me. Wow. Um, you know, the, the main line that our little hot dog buddy, Ginger, <laughs> says to her. <laughs> can't remember his name um if you want something bad enough anything is possible Hmm. which is so true i mean there's many movies of this of people like overcoming the odds or have these disabilities and just fucking do it anyway and it's a great message you know through the decades like if you want to do it like you can fucking do it and she worked her way around that and like you know was able to do it really successfully and you would think how how would it be possible to like she struggled so much to get on that horse when she could see and that she was able to do it when she was blind but as they always say with people who lose any sort of sense like all of your other senses become much stronger so clearly she's able to like lean on her hearing instead you know her her feeling uh touch and mm-hmm. touch and stuff like that and like works around it so it's awesome so it's a great lesson for everybody yeah sure yeah, yeah i'm sure. like, yeah i was a little bur- i was a little bored i'll be honest i think Ugh. that like it <laughs> Well, here's what, here's what here's what is the problem for me is that I feel like this whole love story is a distraction of this thing. Like what you just said is very beautiful and that makes sense and that does make the movie very nice. But this whole like love story, what I get is the like pulling force of this that you're like when you're little, you're like, ooh, love story, yay. It just is just it's unrealistic to me. I thought the love story was a cherry on top, but also it's what really happened. But, it's not okay. like they manufactured that. But, okay, but they didn't like build it up at all in this story. They had one scene of like one bonding scene of her learning how to ride a horse, and then they go to the swimming scene where he makes out with her, well, and it made me uncomfortable. They can't show every phase of their relationship, and also this is the okay, 1930s. I, okay, okay, so sure. Things went yes. faster. But then they're all of a sudden like in love or whatever, and not really because they, I'm pretty sure they've only like had that one awkward makeout scene. And then Al runs away, and then he supposedly, and I don't know how long this time period is um, of like when he's gone and when he returns, but he's writing 
writing her all these letters, which she does not receive. So he's like spilling out his guts and he, she he's not getting a reply from her and isn't like, why aren't you writing me back? Okay, does she write him letters? Because like, why? Yes. Why didn't they have that conversation when he came back was like, yo, bitch, why didn't you answer to my letters? Yeah, they should have had that discussion. But also like, you know, it was just like a different time. And I think like people did fall in love faster and like. It was just, that's all you had to do. It was boring. Mm. It was the 30s. All you had to do was date and fall in love and be hungry all the time. Yeah. That's what you did in 1932. I just feel like this, because of the the length of the movie, which I I feel like is short, although I I haven't looked up the um, exact length, but I feel like they cut, they maybe cut a lot of corners and yeah. like so they they missed out on a, on a few things and i just i don't know i'm like i said i have a hard time with the farty time periods i just well, i'm just glad that they didn't me. manufacture a love interest like it, it just gives me i'm just glad it was actually like she really did marry al who was the son of the the guy who invented the diving horse thing and mm-hmm. that was all real and they were married for a long time as they said uh, in the end of the, in the film they had a very oh. happy life uh but yeah, I don't know. I, I still like it. I mean, it's like, you know, a little bit dated and, and whatever. And yeah, I think it's not. I don't know. I like I love that farty time period, 1930s stuff. I'll say. I mean, unpopular opinion. I would love to live in the 1930s. And, you know, I'm sure people in the 1930s would be like, you crazy. Because that was a rough time. The depression was not fun. But it seemed like a really, like, simple time, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, after that. It just seemed really nice. I think it was nice if you had a little bit of money, but maybe not if you like if you could afford to buy to wear those pretty dresses well, and nice hats. Here's my thing with the 30s, I think right? It's just like the hats. <laughs> I do love the hats, and we'll go into into detail in a couple minutes. But here's my thing with the 30s, right? So at this point in the 30s, you had electricity, check. You had telephones, check. You had cars, check. You had refrigeration, check. You had a lot of stuff that like maybe the other decades were missing stuff. You had decent music, um, you know. Uh, women could vote. So a lot of stuff in like the past decades where you're like, eh, wouldn't want to live there, kind of shitty. Uh, all those were erased. Mm. And I feel like that's when life started to get like a little bit more modern and you had like these modern conveniences, but you also had like a little bit of, you know, like I said, a simpler time, which I'm very attracted to. So so I like it and I think I would just like to test out living in the 30s. If anyone's mm. going to make a time machine. Midnight in Paris. I'm going to yeah. go. Now, you have this being 1932, which is the third year of the Depression, right? Maybe like second year, really. And there's like a shot of, I think, Herbert Hoover in the beginning. So he's still president. And then it will be like a couple more months before FDR takes over and really a couple more months before anyone sees sort of like any, you know, positive stuff coming, you know, uh, government aid and stuff like that coming to help people out of this depression. So it was still pretty bad then. But you don't necessarily get a sense from this movie that it was, like, bad. Mm. Right? Like, no one's going hungry. No one has holes in their shoes. Like, she lives in Georgia, which already there wasn't a lot going on. She, like, lived in the prairie. So it wasn't like, you know, they noticed a huge difference. It wasn't the Dust Bowl. Right. Um, But they do, like, a little bit of news clip clippy thing at the beginning you know like the the guy standing in line for the food and, and all that stuff um and atlantic city seems like a blast okay, I, okay yes i agree with that the appeal of the atlantic city life in the 1930s seemed very cool uh very boardwalk empire yes. very it just is like classic old epitome of that of this time period i guess I'm willing to bet that Atlantic City is no longer as yeah. charming as that. Exactly. Um, but I don't know. Maybe it still holds at least some snippet of that. But I did like that part the best for sure yeah. of, of the movie. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And also, sweet Confusion, I thought this movie was about like a diving horse contest and that the final scene was like her getting ready to like do her jump in the contest. But then the symbols happen and she and something bad happens like that's what what my memory was of the movie um so that's not turned out not to be the case not the case and again going back to that like simpler time like kind of discussion how like you know i was saying with like circuses and stuff like that how people would like go pay to go like see these things right like this is a form of entertainment whereas now we're so spoiled we have like you know form of entertainment is still kind of going to the movies i mean you might go to the circus or whatever but you know, with the internet and all that stuff, you can see whatever you want at any time. Almost like kind of what I talk about with like zoos, right? Like you'd have like zoos and people would go because they would never ever be able to go to Africa. They would never be able to see other than like a 
picture in a book of what a tiger mm-hmm. looks like but you would go to a circus and see a tiger and it would like blow your mind and yeah. i love that like that you know that before we had technology and like globalization all this stuff like that was people's lives where you were just like so thrilled mm. by almost like everyone was a two-year-old you know mm. like we've been hanging out with our niece a lot because she's here from ireland and like you remember how when you're little like everything excites you and how like exciting mm. that is yeah well, I'm also I'm curious about the like death defying uh, stunts or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about this a little bit in in Batman Forever, but like, what is the appeal of what of like dropping the net? So like, the trapeze artist has to do this like scary stunt and they could die. Like, why were people excited about about seeing this? I, yeah. I just feel like I would be. Ter- I mean, I was terrified just watching it. I was like, is the horse gonna be okay? I just. I don't know. I don't know why people were so their their lives were so boring. They needed something to like jazz it up. Yeah, I don't know. And then they they have this part at the end where a little hot dog guy makes. So apparently in his part time he is an engineer slash welder, and he makes this one of those um what are those called nowadays? They're like death death globes yeah, or something. Uh, yeah, they have them now and like stunt bikes ride in them. It's just like a circular cage, and you can just like uh, do bike. What is that called? <laughs> like in a circle on the thing. Is I don't know. Um, I guess, but I thought it was gravity. But like, yeah. what do I know? <laughs> but, or like centrifugal force. But like, um, so I think it's, it's alluding to like even more of that stuff. And then like, you know, eventually we get evil can evil and like all these people who are doing like just crazy shit. Yeah. People just love it. And still today, I would say people like pretty much eat that shit up with a spoon. I find it terrifying. What do I know? What do I know? Nothing. Um, okay, so let's talk quickly about, you know, 30s fashion, oh. which is my favorite. I just love it. It's awesome. It's great. Um, you know, I like everyone it dressed up most for of the time. Everyone just looked like so presentable all the time. And again, this is a movie, so I'm sure that wasn't like everyday life. But like Sonora has some sweet outfits in this, most notably the hats. Most of the time she's wearing a hat, which again, I want to say, can we bring back hat culture? I just want we to tried. Hats we all tried. Time. Nobody seemed to catch on. God, she so and awesome. she specifically rocks berets very yeah, well and so it's, many it's, berets it's her signature hat and it's adorable like, and how much money did she have because she had a new hat literally every that's scene. true i didn't see her repeat i didn't hat. see them pulling in maybe i mean she really took off the you know thing and people were paying to see it maybe. so maybe they they all got more money i don't know yeah. but another thing though about like how we always say like people dressed better or whatever all something I just thought of is that clothes weren't like super mass produced like the way they are now, right? So like each piece, of them. right, and they were like handmade and everything was just nicely tailored and, and nice. So I think that's where a lot of it comes from. But like, yeah, the hat's amazing. The dress is pretty amazing. That like style that's, um, what do you call that? Like, drop it's, yeah, it's just very, it's pretty. It's all this like satiny kind of fabric. It's very lovely. Whites. Yeah. Champagne. Yeah, a lot of white. Pink, which I light really pink. Um, yeah. But like, so the hat, she like wears a new, like a lot of little newsboy caps, right? Adorable. And a lot of like a floppy bonnet, which is sort of like her poor person hat, like when she arrives at like the circus. Again, a couple different berets. I think she wears a couple of them even like differently styled on her head. Mm-hmm. So she does like a couple like the French way. She'll pull one down. She'll like flip it up. Very cool. Um, at the funeral, it's like a white hat with like a, uh, a ribbon. And then when she gets to Atlantic City, it's this beautiful floppy white hat that she like turns up in the front. Oh, yeah. Love. Priceless. Yeah. Here's, but here's what I don't like about 30s clothes. Ill-fitting suits for men. Yeah. Or were they just the ones on Al? Um, and B, poopy pants, which is... <laughs> <laughs> well, this, wasn't it as the equestrian pants? Well, pant that's what that I couldn't tell. But... Yeah. but I do remember this seeing this style in like other like in Downton. I, I think they like I don't know. I feel they like this was like, like jockey pants. Yeah, they're just they're like um, baggy on the crotch area <laughs> where it looks like maybe you pooped your but pants. You know why that is? Because I think they're on the horse and like when they get on the horse, it's tight. So sure. you have, oh, yeah. it has to yeah. be like that baggy, so then it can be tight. That makes sense, but, but it doesn't change the fact that they look like poopy pants. And <laughs> I don't know. I'm not also, crazy about what them. I find off putting is the 30s bathing suits. Mm. Uh, for women, they were always like kind of ugly, but seeing them on men, they're like weird uh, <laughs> wrestling uniforms. <laughs> yeah, they're and, just modest, like full, yeah. covered up everything. Oh, yeah. It was basically like a dress that you wore yeah. uh, in the water, and that was that was that. You know, exactly. no sexy, sexy, no, no, nope, no, no nope. sexy time. No speedos. Yep, yep, yep. Any th- any other thirties fashions? Um, what else? What else? I mean, I found that scene really funny. So like. 
the woman who plays Sonora is like gorgeous. The girl doesn't need like a dot of makeup and she's just like very naturally pretty and she has like short hair because she cuts it like we said in the beginning and it kind of just like falls where it does but she's she's very pretty marie who is the original diving girl is like very made up she has red hair she always has red lipstick on she was like full makeup whatever so she like gives nora this speech that like oh like you if you have no natural whatever beauty you have to like help perk it up and i'm like are you kidding look at that girl like she's got a lot of natural beauty and she takes this to heart and then goes and gets her hair done and her makeup done and like puts on this dress to i guess at this point she's kind of figuring she likes al i think and kind of wants to like win him over oh and she's hearing Marie being like, Al's going to take me out dancing or something like mm. that. So she's trying to like win him over. And it was one of the like most like only scenes without a makeover scene like worked against the main character because mm. everyone kind of like laughs at her and it's like, ha ha ha. And like, yeah, um, it's not that she looks insane. It's yeah. just not her. It's not like her. she looks very she doesn't pretty. Look, she doesn't she look, look pretty at all. She oh, weird. I mean, not that she looked pretty. She just didn't look like herself. Yeah. But like, I don't. Yeah. The, there were. A, so like that scene laughter sure and then there's this other scene at the end when al proposes to her and he does it like in the microphone and at first i thought it, he like didn't know he was by the microphone and was like practicing because there was an earlier scene of him practicing his like and now presenting blah blah right. so i thought he was like practicing his proposal and the audience just like loses it and they're just like oh ho, 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 funniest thing i ever heard and we're like why are they laughing because he's but he actually was proposing to her no. for real i just didn't get that i didn't get that at all yeah why would you laugh? Maybe at they just didn't. Proposal? Maybe they just didn't do that in the, in the thirties. So. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. That was weird. But that's what yeah. I. That's what I have to say. Also, random question. I just thought of now. Do they have to dig a new pool every time they came to a new place in the county fair circuit? Because that pool was like the same weird shape every ground? time. Yeah, oh, pretty sure it was. That was above oh, ground. Only at, in Atlantic City did it look like one of those above ground circular oh, okay. ones. I mean that they the fact that they had to build that every town they went to is nuts to me. Yeah, I mean, I mean it assuming that's what happened. Like, how long did that take to to make? I don't know. What was the yeah? What was the and like all the pieces were in the traveling cart that they had. I don't know. How long were they in one area? Good question. <laughs> I am not familiar here with the schedules of county fairs in the 1930s. Uh, I don't know. All right. Is it time for Sweetie History or what? Um, yeah. Okay. Here's Sweetie what History got, lesson. Guys. Yeah. So, uh, as I said before, uh, based on a, a real life story, awesome. Basically, the movie is what her life turned out to be. She grew up in Georgia, ran, saw this ad in the newspaper, went to go, blah, blah, blah. So her horse was actually named Red Lips, which I think was one of, was the other horse, was the brown horse that Marie used to ride. Oh. Yeah. So that was her original I don't, horse. I don't, I'm not crazy about that name. Not it's lightning. a little gross. I'm not either. Uh, I don't know. I don't like it. Nope. Um, the, uh, what else do I have here? So she was, like I said, 15 when she started doing the diving. So that's pretty cool. Um, she didn't love this movie. She said, like, they basically got, like, you know, that she used to dive with horses and her name right and all that stuff, but everything else was basically, hmm. like, not true. Which, they had to dramatize it, of course. But, like, so, what? So she didn't fall in love with Al? No. So <laughs> she did marry Al, so that was true. Uh, fun fact, her sister, Arnette, the blonde, creepy children of the corn, the girl that you don't like, um, also dived. What? I know. Did so she, she came to join bo- her? Oh my god! In Atlantic City, See, that would have been cool. That would have been a cool thing yeah. in this story because it is sad that she just like there goes her sister and never never hears from her again. Yeah. It's just gone. Yeah. So her sister said that um, while the movie they make it uh, claim that like she needs to keep doing the the diving, you know, the horses because like she wanted to prove everybody wrong and had that whole thing. But her sister was like, oh, no, she just did it because she was like so much fun. Like it was the most fun we ever had. We thought it was the greatest thing. And we just like wanted to keep doing it. They didn't want to like prove anything. They just like, you know, loved doing it. So it wasn't, you know, obviously they made more of a message to it. But then that was there, which, you know, makes sense. Um, And then the real life Sonora lived to be 99. Did she dive horses until she was 99 no. years old? I mean, she only did it till, you know, what, yeah. whatever she said, like 11 years mm. later. But they, she did write a book about it. Oh, cool. So there's Ooh, a, a Sweetie book. book Club. Sweetie Book Club. Yeah. Um, but she was like a cool bitch. I got a couple uh, photos of the real mm. horse jumping and then a couple of her just um, like portrait ones of her um, that I'll post up on our Instagram to show you. But um, yeah, seems like a really cool lady and... 
yeah, I think, and you know, beat the odds, but I think really just did it because she loved what she was doing and, and just thought it was like a huge thrill um, of yeah. her life, which yeah. it would have been. I mean, that, so she, that seems crazy to me. But she really did go blind. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Again, yeah, I think it doesn't say, it didn't say in the, the biography that I read, or I mean, I'll have to read the book, um, if it was that similar scene where the horse got spooked. It just said that she like went in the ro- the water like incorrectly, and mm. and that's what detached it. So and I don't know yeah, if it was maybe a they added that to make what. it more dramatic yeah. or something. Uh, but it did. Because yeah. how else would you explain it in a movie? Right, you know? and you just be like, oh, she went in wrong. She Remember that wrong. thing oh, no. Doctor Carver told her not to do? Oh, she no. did it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get that. Interesting. Yeah, and I can see that that you know they often do dra- dramatize things, but I think it would have been cool if they like let, focused less on the love story and then more on the like sister coming back and yeah, like that, that cool, cool thing. I think that would have been cool. It also said that um, even during the 30s when this was happening, they had like the society for animal cruelty or whatever would be like always visiting them and being like are you sure like you're not like torturing these horses like they wanted like and they never found any instance that the horses like were treated badly or didn't want to yeah. do it or anything. I mean I guess the question is like so they're always like what the horse does it all on his own like he wants to jump but does he have a choice like does he know there's something at the end there because like the way that you know he's just running up the thing well, maybe he doesn't know a horse to do that I wouldn't don't know. any horse like not see like see it's I just like don't think he knows the it's equivalent coming. to like the edge of a cliff I right think he just doesn't like, realize but that like if a horse edge. came to the edge of a cliff like wouldn't it like uh, and like be on like two legs and just like stop yeah. like how do you teach a horse to go i don't know i don't know you got a lot do of you questions. start with like a smaller thing and just teach it to go duh, maybe duh, they duh. don't show any of that they don't show any like pool practice in yeah. this does she even know how to swim you know it's like what I don't know. I think they could have showed that part of it a little more because I just don't buy it how quickly she like picked it up. Basically. Yeah, I got to read that book. Uh, but yeah, let's read the book. We'll talk back here. Uh, you know, talk about yeah, it. We'll tell me more. In. Tell me how you feel. Even though we have not had a successful Sweetie Book Club yet. Um, I mean, we maybe really realistically it. only tried one. Yeah. It was Cocktail. Terrible book. <laughs> uh, <laughs> still keep talking about it uh, to this day. Um, so bad. But yeah, maybe maybe the third time's a charm. I don't know. What was the second one that we tried? Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken, guys. Oh, fried Green Tomatoes? What? Was oh, that yeah. one, too? I think I, there's I, been I a bunch. I do want to read that. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be okay. good. I'm gonna, I'm, I mean, I'm in like 12 book clubs, but I'm, I'm going to keep going. Two. You're in two book clubs, but yes. <laughs> do 12, it. 12, Same difference. All right. Um, anything Anything else? Uh, here's a question for you, sweetie. Yeah. How did one room schoolhouses work? <laughs> Sweetie's so perplexed by this. She just she just doesn't get it. So at the beginning, it's, you know, in Georgia, r- rural Georgia. And uh <laughs> popped into my head that, like, <laughs> scene in, or that episode of 30 Rock where um, what's-her-face is in that movie, The Rural Juror. <laughs> you never say the thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, 30 Rock fan? Anybody. Um, rural Georgia, and she is in a uh, one-room schoolhouse, so you have kids from the ages of, oh, I don't know, like 5 to 15 in there. How did that work, guys? So you would have little kids, like, marching in and be like, hey, like, I don't know how to do math or yeah, read. Like, what are and the then you ABCs? had people who had been to school for 10 years? Yeah, I really, I honestly don't know. We'd have to rewatch Anna Green Gables. They all seem to be in the same age group. I thought they had them come at different times. I don't know. Maybe people had, like, silent individual work in a workbook on their little chalkboard. I don't know. Can someone come back um, from the dead and tell me how, how Yeah, someone happened? who has historical knowledge of that, let us know. Um, but yeah, it seemed it seemed crazy. And the teacher could just seem really do whatever they wanted. There no rules, no standards, no anything like that. Could just like whip you, like whatever. It seemed like a bad business, but whatever. Yeah, good question. Don't know. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, that was the only oh, question I had. Rounds. Because I know everything. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, do you guys have thoughts about this movie? Apparently you do because you are all very excited on Twitter. Uh, come find us at the Sweetie Club or on Instagram at Large Marge Santos. Thank you as always for listening. Bye. Bye.